Hi, and welcome to Michael's Nature Video, part 5. Not 1, not 2, not 3, not 4, but 5. We find ourselves at the very edge of East Cromlington Pond. East Cromlington Pond has been designated a site of science, special scientific interest, an SSSI, and a local nature reserve, as well as being owned by the Northumberland Wildlife Trust, uh, people who I've worked for before. Anyway, just as a recap, just as a sort of go-between from the last Michael Nature video, I did mention that we would have a session, a continuing session in the deep. Well, the availability of cars has made us go a little bit further out. So here we are. It's come upon and it's a nature reserve with a difference. It's my bit nature reserve. Anyway, I have in front of me a map. It's the map I used in Nature Video Part 4. And as you can see, it's very detailed and good. Now, where we are is here. In this nature is a B2 with the ponds. I'll explain more about the ponds in a minute because they're interesting. But we shall be, through the course of the nature video, going into these woods, through there, onto this proposed golf course, which I think is atrocious. And I think it should the area should be left alone as of, as for all, not just for the up, up, upper class and rich golfers. All of this is supposed to be a golf course, which I'm fuming and foaming at the mouth at, because I like it, and it's uh, grungy. Very grungy, in fact. In fact, when I feel grungy, I go there. There. Um... Then we'll be heading off along the track, past the Kiro, and into the farther reaches of the um, unknown wastes of what's been, well, they've actually been um, spoil heaps, and now turned into Forestry Commission style forests. Mixed woodland actually, but for this area, I don't care how far you'll go within the sort of radius, this is the place to be. The nature reserve of East Cramon. And there's a few pointers that I would like to make from the get-go. Firstly, firstly, and this is first, we will be, the, the pond is what's known as in succession. Let me very scientific word that, but I'll explain what I mean now. Um... The pond, uh, ponds are not stable. They are very short-lived for biological habitats. Um, a pond in succession means that it's turning. It is because ponds are like used for um, well, more, this pond here is actually a subsistence pond. But use, other ponds need to be dug out to be, to be maintained as a pond. Otherwise, it succeeds into marshy ground and what we'll see here is the pond actually drying up into marshy ground as more and more shrubs and scrubs are going encroaching, drying it up. Then I, I can actually predict this pond, 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 pond's future. Oh yes, Mystic Michael here. I will predict that this pond will turn into a marsh, into some wetland, into some boggy land, into some damp land, then the, then the first starts of the trees will come in, and then the bushes will come in, and then we'll, if nothing's done about it, it'll become a natural, really regenerated woodland. We're going to go now into the pond and just see what's what. I'm going to show you what I mean by succession. I'm going to justify my words. Anyway, this is my glade we've started in. I hope you like it. It's near the road from my liking, but it's like the glade I come in when I'm you know, walking around these areas on a ramp. Yes, it's a helicopter. Forget the helicopter. <laughs> Ah! 
You know what I was telling you about succession and um, the uh, the dead rabbit. I thought it was a snake. Uh, do you know what I was telling you about succession and um, the uh, whole uh, natural uh, development from pond to woodland? Well, here, you know, it's a, you know, some of the wildlife trust manages these ponds. Well, um, they have actually stopped succession and dug out the pond. You see, it's only by man's intervention that you can keep a, 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 an unstable habitat like the pond um, stable by digging it out. Right, if you follow me, we'll have a look at the Pretty pathetic pond, eh? This, as you can see, the pond's drying up and the land is slowly, slowly coming in. This would have stretched right around here, all the way out, and continues past where those reeds are. But it's drying up, as I say. A little example back there of when it wasn't drying up. But uh, it is drying up, and um, I'm not sure, I've got mixed feelings about the thing. It's naturally drying up, but there's not very many ponds of this nature in and around, you know, and around the place. Anyway. Deep in the heart of the secluded realms of this nature reserve, you find me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to point out some parts and areas. I'm going to do it again from the top as we leave the pond, but at the minute I'm going to start pointing things out of interest in the reserve. Remembering that the reserve is only a few hectares in size. Anyway, of course here we've got the more reed bed. This is at the south side. We've got more reed bed and uh, bushes and what have you. And um, basically this pond here at the back was actually wide, deep pond. But now it's all sunk and gone bogged. There's a peculiar classic reed vegetation. This is what's known as classic car woodland. Classic car woodland. It's like woodland that can be. It's made of willows, willows, and um, alder, and basically things that can survive in wet conditions. Basically, and we've got quite a bit of. This is, used to be an island. If you can picture this, all water and all that water back there, and water there and water there. This is like a car. Island, which is now encroaching on the pond. Right. Over there is another pond, which uh, is um, the best pond in the reserve for reptilian and amphibious activities. Great crested newt, palmate newt, common newt, mutant, uh, the um, edible frog, the common frog, the, um, uh, the common toad and the natterjack toad can all be found within a space of a few square meters. <laughs> 